Good morning. I'm Roy Chestnut. I'm the chairman of the Developers Conference um, and director of technical marketing for Teledyne LaCroix. Welcome to day two of the MIPI DevCon moving mobile forward. This is track three, uh, verification and debug. Track four for camera and display is being done in the Grand Hall Auditorium. Um, as the presentations go on today, we'll hold questions until the end of the presentation and we'll make sure we've got at least five minutes or more for, for questions. Our first, uh, our first presentation today is verification of mobile SOC designs. Uh, Mohammed Sami of uh, Mentor Graphics. Mohammed is a verification technical lead at Mentor Graphics. He's currently responsible for the verification of IPs developed for emulation purposes. He has over 10 years of experience in hardware and uh, hardware verification and software testing domains. He received his Master of Science in Electronics from Ain Shams University in Cairo, Egypt. Please welcome Mohammed Sami. Thank you. Okay, good morning. Uh, I'll show you today how uh, we uh, implemented and verified a verification platform targeting uh, UFS2 and uh, CSI3 solutions. Uh, I will give an overview of the platform, then go through the software and hardware design uh, implementation and uh, things that we considered in the implementation. Uh, then I will speak about verifying this platform uh, and how we verified it on the UniPro level and system level. And finally, I will show you a, a protocol analyzer, a virtual protocol analyzer tool that uh, we used in debugging the, the platform. Okay, so the target of the platform is, uh, is, is creation of a verification, verification platform uh, for CSI3 uh, and UFS2 uh, host controllers. Uh, the, the, the end goal is to run on in simulation and emulation, and the platform uh, consists, as we see here, uh, from an M5 uh, with a UniPro on top of it, with an application layer on top of the UniPro. Uh, the application layer uh, could be a, a, a UFS2 or CSI3. Uh, uh, the end goal is to test uh, a customer that, that has uh, a UFS2 or CSI3 host controller. So, okay, the part, of the, platform, part, part of the platform is implemented in software. Uh, all these layers are implemented in software, the transport layer, the network layer, and the DME, along with the application layer of the protocol. Uh, the, these are implemented in pure software, uh, while the data link layer, the Phi adapter, and the M5 layers are implemented in hardware. So since the, our goal is uh, simulation and emulation, for simulation, the whole system runs on a host machine. Uh, uh, for emulation, the software part runs on a host machine and the RTL part runs on an emulator. And the communication between the, communication between the, the, the software layers, the network layer and the DME layers written in software and the uh, data link layer and file adapter layer written in RTL uh, is through a schema uh, pipe uh, 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 transaction-based methodology. The schema uh, stands for uh, standard for co-emulation uh, modeling interface. Uh, it's based on C++ proxy here, communicating through DPI uh, export and import function calls from a, an XRTL transactor. This transactor is uh, synthesizable, so it's uh, an RTL code, but uh, supporting extra features that are not supported in regular RTL. Uh, so that's, called, that's why it's called ex, uh, extended RTL transactor. Uh, in our implementation, we started with implementing the network layer and the data link layer with the connection between them as a proof of concept that if, the, if this worked well, uh, then uh, we can build up on that. 
And after that, we started, we continued with implementing the transport layer and then the fire adapter layer. So we call this a middle out methodology, where we started from the middle and then the software guys continued in the software layers and the hardware guys uh, continued in the hardware layers. This is a code snippet from a C++ proxy. Uh, this is a write transaction uh, issued from the C++ proxy. This is an untimed software model, uh, converts DME and network layer SAPs uh, from high level transactions into uh, a low level uh, uh, pin activity through a DPI function uh, called in the XRTL transactor. So this is just a function call that is moved uh, into the XRTL uh, transactor, uh, which decomposes the transaction, and after that it calls an event in the hardware, uh, in the transactor itself, uh, to start applying the content of the message. The interface between the software layers represented by the, the transactor and the hardware layers represented by the uh, data link layer and the physical adapter layer is through a memory-like interface with the initiator of the request being the, the transactor of the physical adapter layer of the, link, of the data link layer started its communication with the request, asserting a request, and the, when the target layer is ready, uh, it, start, it asserts a ready signal, followed by an enable signal from the initiator with the data, and uh, by it select enable, so that uh, we, we can easily communicate the message from the software side to the hardware side. The same interface is utilized between the data link and the network layer, between the phi adapter layer and the DME, and between the data link and the DME. Uh, in case of network layer, uh, all fields here are valid, uh, except if we are sending an odd number of bytes. For DME, for DME SAPs, uh, the, the field decoding depends on the DME SAP opcode, which is the first uh, byte in, the, in, the, in a 64-bit, sorry, which is the first symbol in the first 64-bit uh, symbol. Okay, uh, this is the, the, the software layer, the application being a CSI3 or UFS2 here, and here is the Unipro transactor at this side, and this is the Unipro software implementing the, the network layer and the transport layer and the DME as well. The communication between the between the TSI, the application layer and the, uh, and the Unipro software layer, uh, it's through a function call. So the, the application layer just calls a function in, the, in a P-thread application here, uh, when, whenever the application would like to transmit something. And when the Unipro software side is responding or uh, giving an indication to, uh, to the application, uh, it goes through a function, uh, a function callback. The communication between the, the P thread here and a system C thread here is through Unix pipe. And the communication between the, the system C thread and the transactor is through DPI function calls. Okay, we, we choose to implement the software layers, the, the upper layers of the protocol in software uh, to give us more flexibility and to speed up the implementation since the software is much easier for this. And since we, we, the emulation uh, gives us the capability to integrate between software and hardware and uh, run them uh, in, in, in an emulated environment. Uh, also, we implemented the data link and the physical adapter in RTL uh, to enhance the performance of the overall system. So uh, if, we, if, for example, we, we move the network layer to, to be in RTL, there will be a communication overhead with the, there will be no gain in the performance. But if we move the data link from the RTL and implemented it in software, there will be a big overhead, overhead over in the performance. Uh, because the, the physical, the phi adapter layers give symbol by symbol to the data link. So this would cause, uh, will cause a big performance hit. Uh, also the timers uh, are in the PAL and data link. So uh, to 
accurately model them, we implemented them in hardware. Uh, finally, the, the, the function implemented in XRTL or in the transactors uh, has a timeout mechanism to avoid blocking the calling software. As for the hardware design, we have made full separation between the data and control uh, buses and full separation between the TX and RX data buses. Also, all layers, uh, the attributes of all layers are implemented in memory-like module uh, so that we can easily access them for debugging and easily access them for initializing the whole protocol. Uh, also, the internal bus is implemented in 64-bit fixed regardless of the number of lanes uh, to ease the internal implementation. Also, we merged the, the data, the PA data set and the PA skip data set in one with a control flag to differentiate between them. Okay, as for the system verification, uh, the M5 itself had a, a, a standalone UVM environment testing it in emulation. So, and it was already used in uh, SSIC. So we, we were confident in, confident in, its, uh, uh, in its quality. Uh, uh, for the UVM RTL part, we had a UVM environment uh, testing each layer separately. And uh, later on, we integrated the two environments together to test the integration between the Phi, the Phi adapter and the data link. Uh, <clears throat> for the integration between the software side and the hardware side of the UniPro, we had a UVM environment testing the system. Also, uh, for the software side itself alone, we had a back-to-back -back test. And for the system level, uh, we had a device versus host UVM environment and a device versus host in a guest operating system. I will show you this right now. So this is the, the UVM environment for the physical, for the Phi adapter and the data link layer. Uh, it's the same for the Phi and the Phi adapter and the data link, uh, where here the dot and here the connection to the DME agent coming from a sequence. And here is an upper layer agent being a network layer for the data link and uh, data link for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for PAL. Uh, and lower layer here represents a peer, uh, a peer device. So if this, had, if this a data link dot, this will be a data link peer device. Uh, this is the UVM agent implements the whole layer of the data link. So it has the ability to automatically respond to, uh, to any requests and can, uh, can act as a real device. The same. Uh, being a peer device uh, should have a connection to a DME agent and to a network layer as well, or a FI adapter layer, or a, a data link layer uh, to get its uh, SAPs from it. The same instance of the agent uh, is another, another instance of the, the agent is created to be a reference model for the system, but, it, but this time is configured like the dot itself. So the, these two are configured with the same configuration. This one has, has a different configuration. The configuration of the whole system is randomized every time you run the system. So this will have a certain configuration and this will have a different configuration and then you start the simulation. The traffic, from the, uh, the traffic going from the agent to the, to the dot is broadcast to the TLM reference model to generate its reference output and the, 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 the responses coming from the data link layer from the dot uh, is monitored and forwarded to a scoreboard to, to compare the, the behavior with, with the expected coming from the reference model. <clears throat> okay, the, the PAL testing environment had something extra, which is a connection between, uh, an M5 connection between the PAL dot and the PAL agent. Uh, the connection consists of four, uh, four, MT, four MTX connected to four MRX uh, through, trans, through uh, an array of, of multiplexers uh, so, that the, so that the test bench can easily uh, configure which physical lane is connected to which physical uh, RX lane uh, and also uh, uh, give the ability to test the physical and logical lane mapping in the system 
Also, we have here an array of registers after the Rx uh, to model the skew in the received data. Okay, when the hardware, the, the, the Pi adapter and the data link were ready for integration, uh, we integrated the two environments as is, the UVM environment for the PAL and the UVM environment for the data link as is, with, with a small repl uh, replacement for the, the, in the PAL data link, in the PAL uh, UVM environment, we replaced the dummy DLL uh, agent that uh, was just modeling, a quick model for the data link with the real connection to the, the, the data link agent which, which implements the data link in full. So uh, the, PAL, the, the PAL UVM environment and the data link UVM environment together acts as a peer device to the PAL uh, dot and the data link dot. Okay, things to, things to, to consider in the hardware verification. Uh, the first uh, important thing is the, the synchronization between the reference model and the dot. So it's, it's very easy that the reference model uh, uh, is out of sync from what the dot is doing. For example, operations like the retransmission where the reference model has sent something while the dot uh, was still in the process and received a neck frame. So in this, the, the dot will cut the transmission while the reference model has already transmitted it. So it's very important to, uh, to synchronize the reference model with the dot especially for the, for the data link layer. Uh, also, it's, it's important to take care of shared resources like the timers in the data link and uh, in the data link and the PAL layer where you might be transmitting something and receiving something that should stop the timer at the same time. So the race between the two events uh, should be handled carefully. Also, to ease the integration between the two layers, uh, try to, to unify the, the transaction used in both of them. Uh, also, for, the, for test bench performance, we decided not to pass symbol by symbol from the data link to the PAL layer, uh, because this will, will cause a big overhead of, in the performance. So, we decided to, to deliver a big transaction from the data link to the PAL, and in case of uh, a retransmission scenario or preemption, the, the transaction itself will have the preempted data coming from, from uh, in one go. And in case of retransmission, the, the, the PAL layer has the ability to interrupt itself and stop sending the, the transaction that it got from the data link layer. In the reception pass, we had to deliver uh, symbol by symbol from the PAL to the data link so that we can, we can uh, act immediately on uh, retransmission scenarios. Okay, for, for testing the software side, uh, we made a back-to-back -back, uh, design for, from the transport layer, the network layer, and the DME, connected back-to-back -to, -back to another transport layer, network layer, DME. All these are in software, and these are the, just the transactors, and this is just uh, a module that uh, would respond immediately to any DME request. That system was tested back to back with a test application that uh, uh, exercised different DME SAPs and transport layer SAPs. Later on, when the software and hardware were ready, we integrated both of them together in a test environment. So uh, this part was running on the simulator and this part was running on the emulator and a simple application was running on both of them to exercise the whole protocol. Okay, when the UFS itself was ready from the software guys as well, uh, we integrated the whole system together. Here we can see the UFS application and here the Unipro device, uh, the software part of the UFS device, and here the hardware part of the UFS device connected to an M5, connected to another M5, connected to a Unipro and UFS host. This UFS host we got from a third party. Uh, the whole environment is a UVM-based environment. We have here UFS BFM and XI drivers uh, with the stimulus and the monitors for the whole system. The last and the most important verification that we had is, uh, is based on uh, a chemo host uh, virtual machine. Uh, so the, the chemo model here, uh, 
models a complete x86 uh, architecture with the UFS uh, drivers and UFS application uh, communicating through PCIe uh, port to a PCIe endpoint that is connected to a UFS host the controller. Uh, this, this one we got from a third party, communicated through M5 to our UFS device here. This one to the right is running on the emulator, and this one is running on uh, the host machine. And here we can see the, dry, uh, the, the output of the SCSI command uh, after the driver boot up. Uh, we see the, the, we can see them, but uh, the, first, the first two are the Kimo uh, hard disk and the Kimo uh, DVD. The, the next three are the well-known UFS uh, logical units. And from here to here are the eight UFS logical units. Okay, it, it was very hard to debug any issue in, the, in such system because we have the complexity of the Unipro itself plus the complexity added by having software and hardware at the same time. So we had to, be, to develop a virtual uh, protocol analyzer. The protocol analyzer is completely in software. It does not require any hardware device. Uh, and it has the ability to trace and monitor RMMI traffic, Unipro apps on all layers, and UFS commands as well. Quickly, this is the, the general uh, look of the of the software. Uh, for each M5 lane, uh, there is a one for one window for its MTX and one window for its MRX, and so on. Here we can see the traffic on the UFS and RMMI interface. Uh, here is the decoding of the SAPs, uh, and here is some device property, and there is a, a special window for. Uh, the attributes in each layer. So going back. Okay. So here we can see the decoding of a, a, a knockout command coming, coming from the UFS, the peer UFS. Uh, here is the data link indication followed by the network layer indication, the transport layer indication, and then the recognition of the command by the UFS as a knockout command. And then the response of the, the UFS with a knock in command going to a request from the transport layer to the transport layer and then to the network layer and then to the data link layer. Here we can see the coding of a PSP uh, frame. And the same decoding applies on all the protocol. Here the uh, decoding of the knockout command. And this is the, final, the, the overall look of the tool. Okay, that's all. Any question? Any questions for Okay then. Thank you.